Welcome to another video and today we are going to be covering off the performance pad modes, all eight of them on the DDJ Flex 4 by Pioneer DJ. Now I have got an introductory course to a DJ controller on YouTube and I did touch upon performance pads specifically in that video. Do check it out if you are a brand new DJ but on that course, I didn't speak specifically about all of the eight modes because it covers off controllers more generally. But today, all eight modes, we're gonna talk about them and what they do, let's get into it. So here we are on the Flex 4. Now, Flex 4 has eight performance pad modes um, and these are selected using this row of buttons here. There's four buttons here. There are eight features, they're just stacked. And if you want to get to the bottom row of features, simply hold down the shift button and then press the corresponding button above um, the word that has the box in it, the, the, the boxed word, basically. I've probably explained that really, really com in a complex way. But yeah, that's how you get to the second row, shift and then press the button above it. Okay, so first and foremost then, from the top left, we'll go through the main modes first. Um, we have got first up the hot cue. Now a hot cue is basically a part of the track that you, where you want um, you know, the song to start when you press the particular button. So it could be the start of the track, it could be the vocal, it could be the breakdown, it could be the drop, it could be the outro, whatever you want it to be. So quite put quite simply, you've got eight hot cues there. Um, and to activate, you can see on the track that I've got loaded here, I'm just gonna get um, a, uh, a recording of the, the track that, well, so you can hear what I'm doing. But I've got four um, hot cues already loaded into this track. So simply to activate it, you literally just press the button. So that's A, B, C. And you can jump around to your heart's content. Now these are hot cues, so as soon as you press it, it will jump, you know, as soon as you press it and press it again, it will jump back to that cue point. So if you keep pressing, it will almost create a bit of a stutter effect. To, to set a hot cue, it could not be any simpler. So literally skip to the part of the track where you want to set the cue point up to. So maybe there, and then press the hot cue, uh, a blank hot cue, which is um, which is not illuminated. So that's a blank hot cue. And that hot cue, as you can see on screen, is now set. And then you can use that. To delete a hot cue, it's pretty easy as well. Hold down the shift button and press one of the illuminated uh, buttons. And that's as simple as that to delete. But basically when a hot cue is set, you can see which which uh, pads have hot cues um, assigned to them because the, the button is illuminated in that orange color. Now, what you'll notice on the default hot cue mode with record box is the track is paused at the moment, it's not playing, but if I press any one of these buttons, the hot cue will start playing, well, the track will start playing. There is a secondary mode that you can actually use here, so um, which is called a gated hot cue. Now, some DJs will prefer this. If you go into the settings uh, of your record box and then scroll down onto the deck section and select the hot cue. So it says during pause, gate playback is applied. So if we apply that, just make sure you enable that checkbox and come back out of it. What you'll notice now is Whilst I press the hot cue, it will jump to that cue point, but until once I release the button, the track won't actually play. So they're more like, I guess, your traditional kind of cue points. So I have to keep my finger on the button in order to play um, from that cue point. Now, if you actually want to play the track, you can also just press play. But yes, that's how a gated hot cue works. So just two different modes to be aware of there. Moving across then, let's talk about the pad effects. So we're gonna activate the pad effects. Now what you'll notice on the, um, on, on the screen here is that by default, Record Box has actually got some effects already set up 
into these performance pads. So basically, it, pad effects, all it does is it activates an effect when you, when you press the button that you set it to do. Now you can change these effects, but to give you an example, you press play. That one there has got a slip loop assigned to it. This one here has got an echo release assigned to it. This one here has got a delay. So pretty cool and you can really get some creativity going with your DJ sets using these pad effects. However, the default ones here in Rekordbox might not be the ones that you want to perform with. And you can actually customize what these buttons do in the Rekordbox software. Now in order to do this, what you would need to do is underneath the pad effects here on screen, you simply go to the, um, the, the, the pad effects and the little cog that appears underneath it. Select that and now you have this menu here. So if you select the up and down arrow next to the effect name, you can then select from beat effects, sound color effects, scene effects, release effects. Now, I don't pay for Rekordbox. I don't have a subscription to Rekord, uh, Rekordbox. I never have paid. And you can see that it is pretty comprehensive in terms of the effects that you can assign um, to these pads. However, if you want to apply any of these scene effects, then you will need to subscribe to Rekordbox because these are currently locked for me. But say, for example, you want to have uh, just a normal echo on a pad, you select from the beat effects, you simply go to echo, and you want that to be um, half a beat, you then select next to that little one, you select that to um, sort of the half there, um, and then the level or depth is, if you imagine this dial here is kind of how intense that effect is, it is so this is sort of the level so at 50 it's kind of at halfway which is which is pretty good so that is how you assign basically uh, the the this this particular button here so it, it goes from kind of top to bottom here so this list here corresponds to um performance pad one two three four and it and, and that's how you do it basically so you can see here now that i've changed it um, to a standard echo. So when I press play now, and then as soon as I release my finger off of that, then the, the effect stops. Now there are up to um, 16 effects that you can apply to these eight buttons because you actually have two banks of effects. You've got pad effects one and pad effects two, which is really useful because maybe you use a certain set of effects for one genre of music and then switch to a different set of effects for a different genre of music. So you can set that up how you like. But have a play, I think, have a look through and that is your pad effects. Next up then we have got beat jump. This simply jumps through the track at given intervals. So um, and jumps through the track at, or backwards through the track, sorry, at, at given intervals. So if you press play here, you can see here these bottom two either jump forward through the track by eight beats. So forward through the track by eight beats or backwards through the track at eight beats. These two are set to four, these two are set to two, and these are set to one. Now I actually find beat jump really, really useful because if the drop of a track doesn't go as well as I hoped with the crowd and they're not really digging it, they don't dig in it, who says that? <laughs> but they don't really like it, then you can actually just jump through, especially if the track's quantized to get to the next breakdown um, a little bit quicker and without too much of the audience noticing because let's face it, when you've had a few drinks in the club, you're not really noticing so you can, you can really use it to shorten things. Or if you've missed a phrasing in one of your mix by a couple of beats, you can jump through or backwards. You know, you could jump backwards just to get things back in time. Now, just like the um, now, just like the um, the pad effects, 
you can actually change the, the beat intervals of the jumps. And if you do, all you need to do for this is you literally just come along to the bottom of um, the, the four pads on screen, and then you can see I've just changed those to be two, four, eight, and 16. You can make it as big or as small as, as, as you like. You can even go down to um, an eighth of a beat or even fine. So let's see what that one sounds like. Really can't notice it at all. That's an eighth. But yeah, so that is your beat jump and you can switch the parameters of how much you want that to jump, but you get two, um, two buttons per sort of beat, if that makes sense. So it's forwards and backwards. Left side is forwards and the right side is backwards. Next up then, and we have got the sampler. Now, samples are really quite fun. They add a little bit of um, quirkiness to your DJ set and you can sample absolutely anything. So a sample is basically just a portion of a track or it could be a sound effect. It could even be um, a script of a movie if you've found something funny in a film and you've got the, the actual audio file, you can use that as a sample. Now, there are actually loads of free samples that you can get from um, Rekordbox itself. If you have not got those, all you need to do is go to File, go to Import, and underneath the Import, you can see it says Sample Pack. So you just click Download Sample Pack. And there are loads and loads of sample packs available on the internet for DJs. Now, unlike the other um, modes on this, um, the, performance, the performance pads, in order to activate the samples, you're going to need to come up to the top of the record box screen on your laptop and activate uh, the sample panel. You need to show the sample panel. So you can see up the top here, just across from performance mode, and the effects panel, you actually have a sample panel. And that actually brings up another set of eight, um, of eight, you know, the eight samples that you can assign to these pads. So you can see here that I've actually got one sample assigned to this um, particular pad here, which is just the classic DJ air horn. And basically when you activate the sample, which can be absolutely anything, um, it basically, whichever pad you assign your sample to, it will eff effectively play that sample. Now there are a few settings that you can adjust with your samples here. In your record box software, you can edit the sample. If you click on the edit here, you can um, effectively uh, adjust the volume of that particular sample. Your overall um, volume of all of your samples is in the middle um, section here, but you can uh, adjust the overall gain of that particular sample. You can even um, the sort of adjust where the sort of the playback point is and also as well the play mode. So at the moment I've got it on one shot. So as soon as I press that, it's going to play the sample once and, and that's it. I don't need to worry about it. However, you might not want that. You might want it on a bit of a loop or you might want it on a bit of a, a kind of a release, a bit like that gated hot cue. So what you could do here is you press play mode here, loop. And as soon as I press this, it's going to start looping that sample over and over. Until... And it's actually quite hard to work out how to get it to stop because I thought if you press the button again, it loops out, but it, it doesn't. So just be aware of that. Or you can even get it on to gate mode, which is, as I mentioned, like the hot cue, which is where basically if I take my finger off the button, it will, it will, um, it will stop playing. But yeah, you can have so much fun with samples and yeah, you can load up to eight of those samples into well you can load you can load eight on that side and eight different ones onto this side but yeah you must activate that using the sample menu that's all i'm going to talk about in terms of samples today because 
I will do a separate video on how to create your own samples within Rekordbox. That's the other really cool thing that you can do with Rekordbox. So if you found a track and you thought, do you know what, I really want to capture that vocal and sample it over other tracks, there is a way that you can actually snip it out of Rekordbox and put it into your sample bank. And I'll do a separate video to cover that off in a bit more detail. So do look out for that one if you are interested. So that is the top four uh, modes, the primary kind of performance pad modes. Now let's talk about the second four, so underneath. So to activate this, as I mentioned, you click Shift and then you click that one there. So the next one that we've got underneath Hot Cue is Keyboard. Now this is actually, I would say, one of the most advanced performance pad features because you are going to have to understand a little bit of musical theory in order to use this effectively. And keyboard basically does what it says on the tin. This is as close to, I guess, a production tool that you're going to get on, um, on a controller. Um, and effectively, it just allows you to um, almost drum, sort of finger drum, a melody in. So maybe you've got a tune going and you've got a really great piano that you can use and then you can actually sort of, I guess, play the keyboard almost. That, that's basically what it is. So I've actually got on, on this um, particular, so for this particular example that I'm gonna show you, I am not very good at this, by the way. I'm just gonna have that out there. I'm just gonna hold that out there. So I'm gonna show you a little bit on how to do it. So you can see that the, um, it, the, 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 the pads are flashing at the moment. I've got a sound that I'm gonna try and um, show you here. So this is a very well-known, um, track that I've got here and effectively what happens here is we've got the sound here very well known but what you can then do is you can move across and it will actually adjust the 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 pitch of the sounds And in the menu, if you wanted to go down the semitone, so down in pitch, if you select the arrows here, you can actually go down as well. Sorry, that's, uh, that's, that's actually up quite a lot. If you, if you keep pressing the arrows, it will, you can go down. So that's, that's how that works. And effectively, what you can do is that if you are playing a track in the same key, in the same chord, this is why I say it's advanced, you can actually effectively create your own little melody. So you can be a little bit creative, but as I say, probably wouldn't recommend, probably wouldn't recommend that unless you are, um, have practiced and know a little bit about musical theory because I'm absolutely useless, but that's basically what keyboard mode does. But you can um, you go basically go from a hot cue and then you can use that hot cue to... Yeah, to create your own little melody and kind of drum it in. It almost like turns the performance pads into drum pads. Next up, we've got Performance Pad FX2. Um, we won't go into that because we've already spoken a little bit about Performance Pads, um, not Performance Pads, the Pad FX. All you need to do is assign eight different effects so you've got a second bank. Follow the uh, method that I showed you in Pad FX1 in order to um, assign the, uh, the, the effects that you want um, to, those, to those Performance Pads there. Next up then, we have got Beat Loop. Now, I'm just gonna load in another track again. Beat Loop pretty much does what it says on the tin. So it basically activates a loop by a predetermined amount of beats or bars. So if we press play on this um, track, and if I activate this particular button here, it's a quarter beat loop. That is a half, one, two, four, eight, 16, and 32. Now what's really good about that is that it just, it's, 
it's just a little bit quicker. It's a little bit more accessible to rather than um, sort of counting out beats using the traditional kind of in and out buttons. There is a four beat loop automatically at the top here. So you, you can basically do a one hit and get a four beat loop. But basically um, the beat loop function just gives you access to um, predetermined sort of loops within the software um, really nice and easily there. And then finally, underneath the sampler, we have got the key shift mode. So once again, a little bit like the keyboard mode, this actually adjusts the key of the whole track. So again, you're probably going to want to know a little bit of musical theory in order to use this feature, but it's quite cool. And if you loop it, you can, and you know, you watch some of James Hype's tutorials, he uses the key shift function really, really quite well in some of his DJ sets. If I loop out of there. And that is your key shift mode right there. Now, of course, you can jump through what I would say with all of these performance pad modes. Do have a look on screen if there are any arrows underneath the actual screen itself, because you can usually change the parameters of any of these performance pad modes on screen. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Please do give me a thumbs up if you have made it this far. Subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to hit 5,000 subscribers by the end of May. I think that's doable and I will see you in the next video.